What if I told you there's an industry out there that generates over $175 billion a year in revenue? Then what if I told you the same industry is jumping headfirst into the cryptocurrency space? With over 3.2 billion gamers around the world, the average gamer spends anywhere from $100 to $200 per year on gaming. It's safe to say a lot of money is flooding into the market. Crypto companies have been fighting for this huge market opportunity, and one of those companies is called Sandbox with the Sandbox token. This cryptocurrency went absolutely parabolic after the Facebook meta rebrand. And what I wanna to do today is talk about the Sandbox token, bring you up to speed on what the project has been up to and tell you why it may become one of the biggest gaming cryptocurrencies in the whole entire world. Alex back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about the SAND token from Sandbox. I mean, this is a really old cryptocurrency. It's been out since 2016. The last bull run, it was relevant. Now it's becoming relevant again as we get this confirmed trend in the gaming industry. So I'm going to go over all the details. And if you appreciate the content, do us both a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with a friend, do something. Don't just sit there. Leave a comment. You want to talk about some type of altcoin? Leave a comment below. We can go over all of that. I actually use these comments to actually make videos in the future, so do that for me. So let's jump into the actual topic at hand. Sandbox was founded in 2012 by Sebastian and Arthur Madrid. Sandbox was made by a company called Pixowl, a software company based in San Francisco. I could even remember, like I told you, back in 2017 when they came out with their 2D mobile game where people can actually own virtual land on the Sandbox but to the surprise of everybody, it managed to add over 40 million users. This was actually a really big trend, right? Following the bull market in 2017. Now they're taking it to the next level and they're basically turning this 2D game into a 3D game built on Ethereum where everybody can create in-game assets called non-fungible tokens. You guys know the deal. In 2018, Pixel was acquired by a company called Animica, a software company based in Hong Kong, which focuses on digital entertainment and gamification. Sandbox Virtual World consists of 166,000 plots of land, which are made of ERC721 tokens on Ethereum. And you guys know this is the non-fungible standard. If you guys never bought any land in the metaverse, you want me to jump into these metaverse topics, see how we can make money off of digital real estate, let me know in the comment section below and I'll definitely make more videos about that. In Sand, you could actually own land as an individual person, which is called an estate, or you can have multiple people own a land which is called a district, okay? So you can actually split it up. Sandbox is owned by big companies, guys. Big companies like Binance, Gemini, CoinMarketCap, the biggest website in cryptocurrency, Atari, MetaMask with the most users on the Ethereum blockchain. Another very interesting fact about this land is that you can actually monetize it with passive income. There's all types of opportunities. You can rent out your space to people that want to advertise or make experiences such as quests, do various things on a digital land the same way you can make money off of real estate in a real world. And the land, you can make it your own, right? You, you can actually customize it in something called the Vox editing software. Vox edit is also used to create in-game assets that exist as NFTs. And there's over 15,000 NFTs found on Sandbox. Sandbox is currently in an enclosed beta and the alpha could release at the end of this year. And what really got the ball rolling for Sandbox is when they announced its first round of public land sales, which took place in February with the biggest website on the internet when it comes to financial related products, which is called CoinMarketCap. You guys know of CoinMarketCap. And they actually became a sales partner. Also at the end of March, Sandbox actually released a public NFT marketplace, which contributed to the Sandbox fourth place positioning by NFT trading volume, according to nonfungible.com. 
Towards the end of June, Sandbox announced that they're integrating with the layer two scaling solution of choice, you guys know Polygon, okay, which is going to make it faster and it's a huge solution for specifically Ethereum to attract liquidity. This is gonna help with things like lower gas costs and of course, lower fees, which people want with games. They want it fast, they want it efficient, right? But probably one of the biggest pieces of news came back in July when Sandbox announced that they're partnering with Skybound Entertainment. If that doesn't sound familiar, these are the same people that created The Walking Dead, the comic book, and of course, the super popular TV show that seems to have an unlimited amount of episodes. Like I'm telling you, their seasons are like 27 or something like that. And they're gonna be putting zombies, okay, into the metaverse. Remember we talked about monetization? Remember we talked about how you can create experiences? This is happening. Think Travis Scott, think, you know, uh, what, what is that game? Fortnite, Travis Scott, these huge events, right? People are going into the metaverse, guys. As we said before in the beginning of the video, Sandbox has some of the most highly traded NFTs in the whole entire NFT industry, okay? This is a huge catalyst for this price action. Also, second, it's still outside the top 20 cryptocurrencies. So the market cap is mid-size and has a huge potential to increase to maybe the top 30, top 40, um, which gives you that exponential jump, right? People are not used to 10 Xs, but if you find something with a small market cap, it's very possible as long as you pick right. Third, SANS tokenomics are pretty well distributed, okay? It has a maximum supply of about 3 billion. Um, its initial current distribution is solid. The vesting schedule is evenly spread, but it's also worth pointing out um, that the vesting cliff that's gonna happen in December might cause the price to drop. This means that we're gonna see another 300 million sand unlocked and potentially sold on the open market, which could create a lot of selling pressure. You guys know how this works, right? Supply and demand. Now this happened back in July and it actually seems to have kept the price from going up. The same thing could happen with this vesting cliff. So pay attention to that. The last catalyst is the fact that they were supposed to launch, um, you know, the actual virtual world at the beginning of the year. Um, they missed that due date and they pushed it off probably because of the Polygon, you know, integration into layer two and making it more scalable. So yeah, we actually might be able to see it, you know, come up very soon, um, especially with all of these other virtual worlds, the Facebook meta brand, they want to move on this big influx of people that are jumping into the metaverse, right? Sandbox is crazy. They're very ambitious. They actually are wanting to follow Minecraft's footsteps by bringing the virtual world to consoles like Xbox and PlayStation. By the end of 2023, the Sandbox aims to have 5,000 games available within the virtual world. So it's not just like one world, there's games within it, right? And one of the major focuses, of course, you know, it's a very interesting concept, right? Pay to earn. There's so many people on planet Earth uh, that want to make money playing games that don't have to do with tournaments, right? So this play to earn model is currently working and it's the reason why Axie Infinity is a top search website and why the market cap is so big, right? So the play to earn model is proven. It's happening right now and Sandbox is gonna take advantage of this. I want you to think about it. There's gonna be multiple games, like for example, roulette, right? In a casino where a physical person needs to be involved. This person can make money, like a real wage and a salary in the metaverse. Now it's not all good, right? I'm a little bit concerned. There's some issues that we have to address, right? Um, Sebastian basically said that 100% of the sand supply will be held by the community in three to five years time. This implies that the company, team, advisors, and foundation are all planning on selling their tokens, okay? They're selling it between now and then. This should make you question if they're gonna even hold, you know, the sandbox token in the first place, and what's going to happen when the last sand token is vested? It's a lot of downside sell pressure. This also brings to concerns the fact that they're selling all their coins, they don't have skin in the game, and I'm, you know, questioning their team's ability for long-term growth, if, if that makes sense. Which makes me think about another scenario, right? They've been building up all this hype for three to four years, right? And now when they're actually coming out with the virtual world, it's gonna be a big load that they have to deal with. So it makes me question, you know, can they pull something like this off? Are they gonna be able to handle the load on their actual website? Cause Axie Infinity has had issues. Are they gonna be able to implement their code into Polygon, which is a brand new layer two um, that not a lot of projects have been able to pull off. These are concerns you have to be aware of. And probably the biggest one is the fact that they have a centralization issue. Um, they are getting, of course, Ethereum and IPFS, um, as well as they're trying to scale with layer two, but all of it is being currently run on Amazon Web Services, which presents a single point of failure that a lot of people have been talking about. Meanwhile, Decentraland, 
uses kind of like a community run network, right? And basically people have the ability to host their own service in this virtual world, meaning no single point of failure. But a, a trade-off of course is what they're trying to go for in SAN, which is scalability, right? They want it to be as fast as possible. Um, like, you know, Decentraland can only host 100 people per server, whereas Sandbox can probably handle much more due to the centralization. This is the trilemma we always speak of. And also speaking of centralization, the Sandbox Foundation still controls the whole protocol, but this is pretty common when you see uh, cryptocurrencies of this magnitude um, and the fact that they don't have like a working product. Typically in the future, they'll start becoming more decentralized, right? So they'll kind of give away some of their power and, and they have a roadmap for that, right? And then my last concern is not with the project at hand, but the whole entire community. Basically, there's been a recommendation from the Financial Action Task Force that's basically said that they want to mandate KYC for every metaverse-like cryptocurrency. So this is kind of like a regulation that could happen in June 2022. Um, and, you know, in general, this kind of calls into question all these types of blockchains. So from my thoughts uh, and plain words, guys, Sandbox is something you wanna keep your eye on. It's obviously one of the biggest metaverse tokens, but in general, if you look at what's going on in the gaming industry, it's still a high risk, high reward opportunity. There's so much different regulation that can potentially happen. Um, there's so many unknowns, but in general, the market is extremely asymmetrical. So it's a huge, risk to reward that I think I could bet on. And you guys know I've been buying some gaming tokens in general. Pay attention to the space, learn from it, understand that competitors can take others positions. I saw it in DeFi, multiple projects that were undervalued taking these huge positions in the DeFi space that you know didn't start off that way, right? The number one project Axie Infinity doesn't always have to stay in that place, right? We could have competitors swoop in and take the show. Also, if you look behind Sandbox, they have decades of experience um, in the gaming industry. The team is really focused on advertising partnerships, both inside and outside the cryptocurrency. Also, the massive amount of funding Sandbox recently received will certainly help with the initiatives and the attention uh, the product has been receiving from legacy companies in the gaming industry like Ubisoft only adds to the project's legitimacy. I do have my concerns, but I'm confident they will address it in due time, just like every other metaverse project. Um, and no project is perfect. That's why it's undervalued, right? If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Thanks for watching this, guys. Catch you in the next one.